fucking man mug. And apparently I'm bossing it. Well, let me let me take some stuff out of here. I've just remembered I left that lot in. <laughs> We've taken this battery bank, this power station, through some rigorous testing this morning. And we've taken it from 100% right down to 3%. The fan's just kicked in, the kettle's still going. It's a race to see which one turns off first. Will it be the power bank or will it be the kettle? Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are reviewing a power bank, the Vitamin Flash Speed 1000. Now, it is gonna be pushed to its limits. We are gonna test it thoroughly and see how it fares at the end of the day. Now one thing I must say, this come well packaged. So this was a, a box within a box and it was a heavy, heavy duty cardboard box that had come in. So I've got rid of that already and we're gonna open this up and show you what's inside. When you first open up the box, you're gonna see these stickers, lots of stickers. There's also a card here from Vitamin with some friendly tips what to do, what not to do, and the service centre contact details are on there as well. There is also the user manual. So a layer of insulation, and then we're straight into the box. Box of accessories there. In the accessory box we've got a USB C to C, an A to C, We've got a car charger and we've got a wall charger, AEC lead. Let's have a little look, see if there's anything else in there. Doesn't seem to be, it just seems to be all packaged in now. So we're going to lift this out and have a better look. First impressions, it looks nice. It looks rugged, two good carrying handles there. There is a vent on the side, so I take it has fans built in somewhere as well. So there's one there. Nice big display screen that's protected. I'll leave that on there for the minute. Um, and let's see how we power it up. Let's press that. There you go. And it's at 85% capacity. So not a lot to charge up for the first charge. We have our input from for the wall to charge it up. We have a DC input of 200 watts as well. So that will be this one. And plug that in the cigarette lighter and there's also a solar input which looks like a mini anderson connection um so unless you're buying a vitamin uh solar panel you'll probably need an adapter because most of the ones i've seen are xt60s so that's a bit of a non-starter as well we'll see your dc output and two dc outputs there as well we have four USBs, USB A's, and we have two USB C's. Three AC, pure sine wave, thousand watt. So this is probably round about an entry level, slightly top end entry level power station. But looking at it, it is quite a nice little bit of kit. Oh, it has a light. I don't know. There's one, three, four is a flashing, and there's an SOS function as well. So, yeah, not too bad, not too f shabby. Now on the top, we have a little storage box. And look what it fits. <laughs> now that's nice, that's nice. But there is space there for one more lead. And I would say that one there. Because if you're using this for camping, or you're using this out in your van, that there would be an added function. So a bit disappointed it's not in the box. So Vitaman do a 1500 watt battery that you can add to the system. It won't increase the power output, it just improves the capacity. So you could go on longer trips, you could power things for longer. So while it's doing its thing, we'll have a little chat about the battery itself, the power station itself. So it's a flash speed 1000 power station. It's a little fatty, it weighs in at 18.8 kgs. It's a little bit heavy, I think, that to be for the size of it. But we'll see how it, how it handles. 
it has 3000 life cycles so let's look at the recharge times and the methods that you can that can do that so plugging it in at the mains this can take up to 70 minutes from flat and i would say flat will be 20 percent via a car outlet seven to eight hours so if you're on a long journey keep it plugged in an additional way to charge this is through the solar panel now you can connect up to 300 watts of solar to this device through the anderson connection there. that would take say you had 300 watts anywhere from four to six hours as long as you're getting good sun it could potentially be a lot more than that living in cumbria one thing i've picked up on the user manual very handy the time you need these is when it when this unit fails or you get encounter a problem but let's be honest who's going to carry that around with them the one place you could put it is in the storage box at the top the problem is it doesn't fit so the one time you're going to need it is out in the field camping something doesn't work right something doesn't connect up properly you can fit it in there but most people are just going to discard that throw it away and when you need it it's not going to be there so Vitamin, make it the same size so it sits in the bottom. It is made out of a waxy material, so I can see that lasting quite a while, even if you're out in a damp environment. But yeah, until people get to know how this power bank works, make the manual the same size as that storage unit, and I think you would do a bit better. There you have it 100%. So, as that stands now, being plugged in, this could be used as an uninterruptible supply unit. So you could plug whatever you needed into there. On the back of the unit, it goes through the battery type, what it is, its capacity. Also, your charging input, your AC, your DC, your Anderson, and your solar. And then it goes through your outputs as well. Obviously, your AC, your DC, and your USBs, A and C. It's time to see what the Vitamin Flash Drive 1000 can actually do we've been using this for a couple of weeks now get the feel of it just to make sure that everything about it works properly and we know how to work it properly so we are going to run some real world tests we're going to use appliances that we would normally use on a weekend away and see how it performs first of all most important thing most important piece of kit in the van is the kettle now this is a brilliant little piece of uh, kit that was recommended to us by Neil and Emma. It's a two cup kettle. It boils around about 600 millilitres and uh, it's <laughs> really good. So the battery bank is fully charged. Let's get it in and let's see how it performs. So initially it fires the fan up. I think that's a bit of a self test. Switch the kettle on. Let's move it up here so you can see it. And while that's boiling, I'm going to make a brew. It's a man mug. And apparently I'm bossing it. It is very cold here today, so that water is going to take a little bit of heating, but the kettle's warm. It's doing its thing. So the kettle is pulling 642 watts at the minute. It is warming up. There you have it. It's making the noise. But look at that. That is down to 89%. Uh, let's see. This is only a 600 watt kettle. So let's carry on with our test and see how it goes. But 12% so far, and it's not boiled. So that's it clicked off. Wow. 20% of the capacity. That is on 79%. Okay. Kettle. A necessity or a luxury will beg to differ. Some see it as a necessity others see it as a luxury but for me 
we all want to brew in the morning when we wake up. So there you go, that's that anyway. 20% for the kettle. So I'm not going to waste that water. I'll leave that to cool while we do the next test. <clears throat> so, you've made your brew, time for some breakfast. So, that's actually a bit too big to be up there. So again, this is a 800 watt air fryer. You will have seen this in many of our videos. Um, we use it constantly. And one of the things I enjoy is making breakfast away from the van. Right. 800 watts. I'm not going to actually cook anything, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate a, a meal. So we'll run it flat out and we'll say 15 minutes. So we're on 79%. That is pulling a thousand watts there straight away. We'll come back to that when it pings. One of the things to remember, and I kind of skipped over that just then, air fryers don't always use the full demand. So what you'll find is they will get up to temperature, quite, take quite a lot of power to do that, and then they'll just sit back and they'll rest. The fan is pulling 32 watts. So a lot of these have digital motors in them that are quite efficient. So looking at that, that there is just sitting now Working away on its own heat. Oh, let me let me take some stuff out of here. I just remembered I left that lot in. <laughs> okay, that's better. We'll uh, carry on with the test. <laughs> Enjoying the brew. So any second now we should hear a ping, and uh, that will be this part of the test completed. There you go. How was that for timing? Forty-seven percent we're currently stood at now. So the next part of our test, I think that's I think that's quite good that because that does you know work really well. It's it's not constantly drawn all the power. It takes it in bite-sized pieces and circulates the heat. Once it warms the element, it just circulates heat, cooking your food. So. For us, another essential air fryer in the van. So, two essential items there. Now let's check the third essential item. Now, we can't leave home without this. It's Lisa's new favourite toy. Now I'm not sure how this is going to perform. This item is 1200 watts and part of Lisa's essential um, kit. So we'll kick it off on speed one. Every girl needs a hairdryer, don't they? So. Let's see if it performs. Hmm. Something happened there. Yeah. Turned it on. <laughs> so let's see how this performs. So we're going to run this for around about five minutes. We're at 46%. This is pulling 436 watts. It's on speed one. Crank it up to speed two. And it's jumped straight up to 1062 watts. That is very warm. We're going to do a video on all these products you see here that we're using today, um, like we did last year. Items that we've added to the van that we uh, believe are beneficial to us and might be a good Christmas present idea. Let's set the timer off. I think we've been running for about a minute there. Let's put a timer on and see how we get on. Four minutes. Like I just walked out of a salon We have a brilliant video of Riley in a hotel playing with one of these <coughs> If I find it, I'll stick it in 
Right, the fans kicked in. So we're making this, we're making this power station work for its, its money today. Definitely, definitely put it through its paces. Right, we're in the final 20 odd seconds of this test and we'll see, yeah we we'll give it a bit of a, a kick in with this hairdryer. I'm not even sure if you can hear me, it's very noisy. <laughs> Down to 17%. And for the last four minutes, we have been pulling out 1,062 watts. We've been running this hairdryer flat out, right? That'll do that. So that you can hear the fan there still running in the background. We have really put this through its paces. Let me just stop this clock, stop it going off again. Last part of the test for me is we're going to put a kettle on that is 1700 watts this is the same amount of water in as the small kettle the 600 watt that we tried right at the very beginning i want to see if it will boil this kettle right at the very beginning we knew we used that little kettle which was only 600 watts obviously a smaller element it takes longer to boil it i want to see if we can do this with less than 16 percent so here it goes. So straight on, we're up to 1260, 1500, down to 1360, 1060, it's leveling itself out. The kettle literally has instantly started boiling. If you look there, we're at, we're using 1061 watts. But that, that was instant. We had a good two, three minute wait with the smaller kettle, with this one. So just for clarity, the hot water is still in there and there's the brew we made earlier. This thing's performing a little bit better than the smaller one, but again, it's the smaller one is a little bit more compact. Half the size wattage wise. But there you go, we are down to 8%. Is it going to boil before it breaks? Before it cuts out? We've taken this battery bank, this power station, through some rigorous testing this morning. And we've taken it from 100% right down to 3%. The fan's just kicked in, the kettle's still going. It's a race to see which one turns off first. Will it be the power bank? Or will it be the kettle? My money at the minute is still on the kettle. I'm hoping anyway, we're down to 2%. We really are. We are really taking it to the limit. 1%. Kettle's in its final stages. Come on, kettle. Come on, kettle. Come on. Imagine if it was a draw. <laughs> that is a long boil, that. That is a long boil. Come on. Yes, yes, the kettle wins. <laughs> I'm a little bit excitable because that is right down to the wire. 1% left on the power station. I think we've given that a good crack. You know what I mean? That's the Vitamin Flash Speed 1000. It's boiled a 1700 watt kettle. It's cooked two meals on an air fryer. It's cooked, it's boiled this kettle and made me a nice brew. And I've dried my hair and made myself look beautiful. That is not a realistic day, is it? We, we would, pr a power bank is there to assist us. Um, and help us through our day we've been unduly unfair i would say by the, putting it through its paces we've taken it from 100 percent 
right down to one percent and it worked it did everything we threw at it so i'm happy with that really happy with it bit of a shock to be honest but uh let's charge it back up and we'll we'll have a look at some other options on it that's the power station plugged in it's around about five to eleven let's see how long it takes to go from one percent to fully charged 53 percent 11.33 and the fans just kicked in right there's a, still a little tiny bit of charge going in there we are at 100 percent and there's 51 hours of charge as it sits there's no there's no draw on it at the minute but it's there half past 12 so that's just taken what was that 5 to 11 about an hour and 35 minutes to get to where we are Well, I do hope you enjoyed that video. Putting this thing through its paces was a lot of fun. And I've never done that before with a battery bank where we've taken it from 100% right down to 1% in one go. That was just all filmed in one hit. We chopped it up. We took the bits out that weren't very entertaining. And we left a few of my mistakes in there. But this thing took everything we threw at it and a little bit more now i never thought it would power that kettle it did the other battery bank that we had wouldn't power that kettle so the inverter came into its own it's rated at a thousand watts but has a peak of two thousand watts and that's pure sine wave so when i plugged that kettle in i really didn't expect it to work i was really really amazed that it that it actually boiled it we were down we used 15 percent if you remember right back at the beginning that little kettle um the little 600 watt one took a lot more power to boil the same amount of water so i didn't expect a lot from the power bank but it shot me and because of that i like this i do like it downside it's a little bit bulky it's a little bit heavy but you saw it perform today and that's all we want we want these little power banks to do what it says on the tin and sometimes a little bit more so it's my seal of approval thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed it i hope what you've done i know people don't like watching review videos and power bank videos but we're going to try and keep everything fresh and when we do a video like this we're going to try and push the boundaries a little bit and do things that maybe other people aren't doing so that was a straight run. We started at 100% and we ran it all the way down to 1% and it held it, it handled it, it worked. So it's a great little product and I like it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again. Why not head over and check out our new website www.thecraftyblinders.co.uk Make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok and our Facebook group the Crafty Blinder Van Builds. Thanks for watching.